So, Roger, tell us a little bit about the clinical correlates of anhedonia. Yeah, absolutely, Vlad. You know, I was thinking about that, that last slide you showed in terms of the effect of CRP and brain circuit activity. And um, earlier here at NEI, we were talking about obesity, and I mm -hmm. made the point that um, we are seeing more persons presenting with mixed features mm -hmm. who have bipolar disorder or major depression. And uh, many years ago, I uh, started to think, well, maybe obesity does metastasize to the brain. I've brought that mm -hmm. up here at, at NEI in the mm -hmm. past. And one, but not the only one, uh, hypothesis is, is that when we see higher levels of uh, adiposity and elevated BMI in people who live with mental illness, we begin to see more pronounced changes in their brain with respect to either the volume, the gray and the white, and or, because I, when I first reported many years ago that obesity in depression or bipolar is associated with greater loss of volume, someone yelled out once, size doesn't matter. Well, then we started looking at circuit. That's a different conversation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, true. Then, <laughs> true. Then we started looking at circuitry. And I like that slide because I've wondered whether or not the inflammatory signature that's a consequence of obesity, in addition to insulin resistance, is changing the brain circuitry. Consequently, the patient who has depression or bipolar or schizophrenia, who's overweight, on pencil and paper or computerized tests, actually has greater cognitive impairment. That's a fact. And that might map onto what, some of what you've said. We talked yesterday, Andy and I, about treatment-resistant depression. <clears throat> we know that a substantial percentage of patients <clears throat> will, in fact, unfortunately not adequately respond to sequential antidepressants. So TRD, the inadequate outcome after two or more treatments. And it may not surprise you that given what we've said about anhedonia, it's, a it's a, often a phenomenological antecedent to depression. It's part of depression. It's a residual of depression. It also highly predicts non-response to SSRIs. So no surprise then that these individuals tend to be over represented, that is people with TRD, uh, with anhedonia. One of the questions asked you about anticipatory and consummatory anhedonia. And um, we have replicated evidence that anhedonia is linked to suicide risk. But that is part of the story. I was interested in getting into some of the weeds of this. And we know that anticipatory anhedonia has an overlapping but distinct neurobiology from consummatory anhedonia. And so we wanted to look at the two separately. So what we found in our report is that both are associated, both anticipatory and consummatory, with higher suicide risk. But where, in fact, the risk was significantly elevated was in anticipatory anhedonia. And there's something about that that has face validity to me in the sense that the hopelessness of not being able to anticipate something better in the future, along with the impulsivity, is a very, very combustible mix.